At London Financial Studies, we focus exclusively on capital markets. Our programmes offer practical learning to professionals from all over the world. So I'm going to go through really the history of LIBOR discounting. We're going to then look at uh, OAS discounting as it's become known for collateralised transactions. But then we're also going to look at uncollateralised transactions and the link between what we often call FVA in the world of derivatives and LIBOR discounting. And then finally, we'll talk about really maybe certain aspects in those days meant that the approximations that we might have been making were maybe not as severe as they are now. So what about post-crisis discounting? Well, uh, it's probably not, no big news to tell you that we observe credit risk in LIBOR rates and related. Uh, well, we've really rediscovered, I say rediscovered as opposed to discovered. We've rediscovered that the collateral rate is the relevant discount rate for pricing collateralized transactions. And that's quite easy to see because if we think that we want to know the value of it, but what about uncollateralized transactions? Now there's no collateral obviously, so it's not obvious what our discount rate would be. Now we might say that the OAS rate, um, which is indeed the collateral rate in most situations, is a fairly obvious proxy for the risk-free rate. Is it, it is an unsecured rate, but it is an overnight rate. So it's got minimal amounts. Of, but what's going on here for an uncollateralized transaction is maybe not so clear. So what does LIBOR plus a spread discounting actually represent? Um, well, this of course relates in an area like derivatives to, so, so what does that mean? What is the FVA that I'm doing when I'm doing LIBOR discounting? Well, basically, um, LIBOR discounting corresponds to an implicit assumption of the last example, which is probably not as common, um, where you might have something like a rating trigger in your transaction that might have liquidity implications. LCR stands for the liquidity coverage ratio. So um, a trigger that would mean, so here's a representation of what we call FVA. It's generally divided into two terms. One is often known as a funding cost adjustment, the first term, and the second one a funding. Valuation adjustments obviously need a starting point. Um, and so this is probably the easiest way we could represent a valuation adjustment to say, I'm looking for the act. So we could look at two approaches here, and it's probably best to keep this in mind, of course, that a typical bank here will be executing an uncollateralized transaction. Why not LIBOR discounting? Well, it assumes, as I say implicitly, that the trading desk can borrow and lend at LIBOR. However, I'm certainly aware of situations where banks are sensitive to this, either because they are currently in a negative position, so they're effectively generating cash that they're trying to lend to their central treasury, or that that position... You mentioned uh, symmetric and asymmetric funding. But what do most banks actually do? How do they treat the, their funding? Okay, so let's start with exactly what we mean by that. It, what happens in most banks is that a trading desk or a business... Uh, would tend to have two.